Hello, welcome to Real Gardens. Well, it's been the wettest April since records began, but that won't have deterred real gardeners, and it certainly hasn't deterred us. <laughs> this week, Anne-Marie is walking the plank with Mike and Alison. Let's plant a few. Carol is practicing floral pest control in Diana's vegetable patch, and Brian and I are stuck in the mud in her duck pond. This house in Stockport, and its rather muddy back garden, belonged to Alison Buckley and her fiancé Mike Woodall. They'll be moving in together after they get married next year. On her last visit, Anne-Marie Powell helped them to build a raised semicircular vegetable bed out of woven hazel rods. As Alison is a trained chef, a vegetable garden was high on her agenda. Since then, they've already planted it up and made a second matching wattle bed on the other side of the garden. This is the first time that Anne-Marie has seen the finished result. These look absolutely stunning, don't <laughs> they? Yeah, yeah. Did it take you a long time to do this? Uh, well, actually, I didn't have anything to do with this. It was Mike and my dad. But right. um, apparently they did this one properly and not slap dash like that one that you did. Cheeky sod. So apparently you did that all by the eye and not levelling it with a spirit level. And anyway, you've got these potatoes oh, here. Oh, yes, planted these potatoes. What's this sticking out here? What's that about? Oh, no. What is it? He hasn't planted no. them in the soil, has he? <laughs> <laughs> That's rubbish. That's coming What's out. What's he doing? Has he planted them in the bags? Yeah. We was panicking so much because we knew he was coming back and we didn't have enough time. So Mike said, we'll just drop the bags of compost with the potatoes in. And they won't and we'll, notice. And we'll put the... Put the soil around. Look at it. You're not supposed to know that's there. Where is he anyway? He's at work, he's got to work today. <laughs> yeah, he's coming down later. So and, well, uh, I'll have him. Yeah. Before Mike gets back, Alison is keen to make a start on the wet and wild end of the garden. Your muscles up to it. Oh, definitely. You can see that this area is really boggy and wet, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And yeah. I know you wanted a seating area somewhere down here, so I've had to think of a way of actually getting you from here down to there. So I thought that we could maybe build a boardwalk. A boardwalk? What's that? Well, you know that song, Under the Boardwalk? <laughs> See, you better stick to gardening. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but what it is, really, is it's a timber frame and it actually raises you above the ground so you don't have to worry about all this boggy and uneven ground all around you. But there's tons of ways of doing it, so I've had to scratch my head a bit and I think I've come up with a solution. Right, yeah, brilliant. And that's where your muscles come in. Right, the come pumping. On. The plan is to make the boardwalk out of scaffolding planks cut in half. The planks will rest on these large logs, partially embedded in the ground. So if you just grab one, I'll show you how we'll do it. Do you want me to put this next put to that? Put this one next to that, yeah? Yep. We'll be laying the planks in pairs side by side, but at each junction we'll stagger them to create a slight curve up the garden. Do you know what I mean? So it will wiggle. Oh, up right, through yeah. like that. You see, I've had the top cut off this timber. So literally, you can just screw into a flat surface. Right. So, but this will really distribute the weight. So it's quite heavy and it won't sink because it's long enough. Right. So it's quite nice, quite pleased with this. Right. First, we're going to work out our curving route by laying out single planks. <laughs> so where am I going then now? I think you should go there. Up here? That's, yeah. We could have used recycled timber. These planks are new, but they'll soon weather to a lovely silvery grey. So if you come up here and have a look, I know they're a bit wonky, but can you see you've got that really elongated S kind of shape? Yeah, it's lovely. Just as the hard graft is about to start, the cavalry arrives in the form of Mike and his old friend John. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Get a kiss as well. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All this lovely darling stuff. <laughs> Mike and John's first job is log lugging. Whereabouts, uh, Anne-Marie, whereabouts do you want? Just everywhere where two yeah. boards meet, basically. These bricks. While the boys Sorry. lay each log in its place, yeah. I'm bedding in the first one at the bottom of the Level. garden. This will determine the exact position of the others. Here's that spit level you wanted. Tiny, isn't it? It's only it? a little one, I can't find a big one. Will it do you? Each log needs to be level and firm, otherwise the walk will slope to the side and wobble. So we'll have to dig out and build up the uneven ground beneath each one until it's securely embedded. Can I just ask you? What? Are the planks 
being laid that way. Yeah. Because I always imagined a boardwalk that the planks would be laid that way. Yeah, I mean, you can have it either way. It doesn't matter. There's no rules. You can do whatever you want. But this way, there's far less cuts, so it's quicker, and you've got much more sort of resonance as you come down here. I mean, it's pointing your way down into the garden, isn't it? What's resonance? <laughs> <laughs> That looks better, doesn't it? It's time to bed in all the other logs and align the boards. Can you just help us line these up? Yeah. Just with your eyes. <coughs> Bits of John. Each pair of planks must be kept straight yeah, so that our gentle curve takes shape right, as we planned. Right, be be yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> The boards are all no longer than six foot to ensure the walk is pleasantly springy without being dangerously bouncy. What do you think from up here? I prefer a step. Take them last two planks out and put a step in. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's fine. So we'll lose these planks. Go on out, you yeah. smack it across. Check that this log will mark the beginning of our walk, so unlike the others, it'll look smarter if the planks are centred on it. It'll look even better with Mike's step. Now, Alison, is it lined up? That's nice, isn't it, that bark there, That's right well at the end? Too. Let's have a look. Yeah, that is not going to get it any better than that. Right, because we need a gap in between these planks, otherwise they'll warp, what we'll need to do is we can just move them apart there and then put this stick in, and that'll keep all the gaps the same. We can mark a line, so when we're screwing, we won't lose the lines. So, if you go up there and start yep. doing those, then you okay. can drill behind, can't you? Okay. And I'll screw. Bill in. Okay, <laughs> thanks. We have to use screws because nails would work loose with all the bouncing. These screws are galvanised to avoid rusting. This boardwalk will be the perfect pathway through the jungly, bog-loving planting that Mike and Alison are planning, especially when it's weathered to a softer hue. I reckon we should try it out, don't you? You go first, Sam. All right, then. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Brilliant, Anne Marie. Yeah. It's the fun. only thing missing is there's some really big, luscious bog planting oh, yeah. in it. We'll have to get some. Hey, does that mean we get a day out shopping? <laughs> Bryony Jacqueline spends every spare moment in her Norfolk garden. Her children also give her a hand from time to time and she's constantly taking on new projects in her three-acre plot. Fortunately, she can combine gardening with her role as carer for her musician husband, Martin, who suffers from a debilitating spinal injury. Last time I was here, Bryony and I began the job of creating what she calls her roundel in the lawn alongside her driveway. And with the help of her son, Christopher, we dug up the inner beds and began planting box in the centre circle. Oh, well, you've done a lot more. Yeah, it's all dug and ready. No, I don't mean dug, I mean you've added to it. There's more of it. Yeah, I stood back at the end of the afternoon and it, it needed an extra ring. You're power mad, so. you are. <laughs> Crazy. Dig, dig mad. <laughs> are we going to plant this today? No, this is going to wait now. First flush of weeds will germinate, hoe them off, and then we're going to have a look at the pond today. OK, what are we going to do with the pond? Um, well, a lot of weed to come out and things to go in. <laughs> Bryony's pond is in a low-lying area of the garden, which floods naturally. When she moved in, it was just a boggy area surrounding a willow, which she's enlarged and transformed into a proper pond. Now it's time for a spring clean. Is this the best time to do this? I think it's a wee bit early, but there's a duck sitting on a clutch of eggs, and she's about to hatch any day. She won't mind me pottering now, but she will do when they all hatch. So the first job is to remove the weed, is it? Yeah, it normally dies down in the winter, but it's been so mild, it's um, become a bit of a nuisance, really. Well, I hope I look as fetching <laughs> as I think you're going to look, wearing those. She told me, she said that my bum looks big in this, whereas when I put mine on, I will start a fashion craze. How about that? Oh, I think mine belonged to someone else. Do you normally wear rubber? Is that... Uh... <laughs> How deep is it? Actually, it's not very. It's a thick layer of sludge on the bottom. So what is this weed? I don't know. It's some kind of willow herb. 
Do you compost this? Yeah, I do. Well, first I let the bugs crawl out, so we'll leave it here for a little while. All these little nymphs. How does it take them to crawl back in? Well, a few hours. Right. But they're all part of a greater food chain. You don't want to... No, no, I'm not anti-nymphs at all. <laughs> I like a nice young nymph. Oh, look at this. That looks like a turd. <laughs> it's a water lily. <laughs> it's growing. Water lily, it is. Yeah. I've never grown a water lily in my life. Well, you haven't got a pond, have no. you? No. I failed to see the attraction of a pond. You know, watching a few beetles scum around on a bit of scummy water is oh. not my idea of fun. <laughs> I think you're thinking a bit rude now, but the oh, okay. dragonflies, they're this big. I like really big ponds. I mean, you could make this twice the size, couldn't you? Actually, I'd love to start again with the knowledge I've got now. I found that one of the hardest things was to think on this huge scale, because I had a tiny garden in London. Bryony clears her pond out three or four times over the summer, and although we've made it all muddy, in a few hours, the mud will have settled again. OK. We've right. emptied it. Now what are you going to put in? What well, have we got? We've got some lovely things here. Well, they don't look very lovely to me. This is really interesting. Are you trying to tell me that that looks lovely? It's Phragmites, the Norfolk breed. For some strange reason, the rhizomes clean the water. Not only is it lovely, but it's it is really... virtuous as well. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this up. What else have you got? Well, this is Glyceria. Right. It's the same effect. Yeah. And then we've got a, a deep water one. This is a water hawthorn. These leaves float on the surface, so you've got to try and get the level right for that okay. one. Okay. All these plants have to cope with ducks trampling over them, so they need to be secured if they're to become established. So where are we going to put these? Well, I think birds will appreciate a bit of cover here, and it's, you can feel it's quite shallow. So just up against the bank, like that? Yeah, if they're half in and half out, then they'll always stay moist. And just pin them with these? Yeah, literally peg them in. Yes, that does work. I like mm. that. Now, do you think she's going to tolerate me getting so close? Probably. Uh, she's just not really fussing at all. She's a good girl. Brownie wants to use Glyceria, the striped manor grass, to help prevent the ducks from treading down the banks. Uh -huh. You see, we're quite shallow again here. Oh, right up here, yeah. Yeah. Now... Yeah. Big hole. <laughs> <laughs> I want to plant this one directly in. Okay. So, in there? Yeah. Anywhere along here would be fine. Did you puddle this when you made it? What do you mean, puddle it? Put clay all over no, it. No, no, it's... So uh, what's stopping it just drain away? It's actually spring-fed from the corner, so once it was dug, it just literally filled up. Do you want to split that? Well, we could do. We could actually get three out of that, but I think with the disturbance of the ducks, it would be better as one. But you're right. Well, we want the weight. Now, what we're going to do is stick this through the middle, like that, aren't we? Yeah, like an so anchor. It, it'll sit in <clears> the <throat> ground without pinning it to it, mm. and you won't see any of that in the water. OK. Do you oh. want another stick, or is one enough? No, that's fine. That's absolutely great. That's it. Right. That's in place. Lovely. The water hawthorn needs to be raised up on a log so that its leaves can reach the surface. It's surprisingly floaty. Oh, that's on the bottom now. OK. Right, we've got the, the gravel on top, of course, to stop the ducks and the fish nibbling away at the roots. Provided the ducks don't knock it over, the water hawthorn will have white flowers by the autumn. I'm out. So this is the bog garden. Yeah, it's just starting to perk up. Yeah, it is, isn't it? But the uh, calthas look fantastic. Yeah, they're lovely. I like the ligularia. Is that Desdemona? Yes, it is. And what's under here? Gunnera. Now, this poor thing has been disturbed by the ducks and it's just been caught by the frost. Mm. I always thought Norfolk was a warm place. It is. It's not. It's bitter. It's freezing. <laughs> Never normally like this. You don't use straw. I use fleece. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, you buy fleece. I have straw. Free. Because mm. I know a lot of people find it difficult to get mm. hold of straw. Yeah, well, anything would but do. But the important thing is, is mm. to keep it covered until all frost has passed. Yeah. I can tell you, next time I'm not coming if it's cold. No, I should just well, stay in bed. I don't want you to come because we're going to think about summer next time. Really? What are we going to do? We're going to look at grasses and make a summer meadow. Summer meadow? Cool! <laughs>
Right, carrots or beetroot, madam. After the break, it's time to sort out the vegetable patch with These Carol carrots. and Diana and their little band of helpers. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome back. At this time of year, the weeds are growing faster than anything. And if you're an organic gardener like I am, there's nothing else you can do about it but just hand weed. And I use a hoe a lot. This is a Dutch hoe which just slices through the weeds. But it'll only do that if it's kept sharp. And I always carry a file with me whenever I hoe. And just every few minutes, just sharpen it up like a knife. And then it will cut through the weeds really well. There are a number of different types of hoes you could use. This is quite good because it's got three edges. And that means you can get in there amongst the plants and delicately work around them. But if you've got plants that you really value and they're very close together, I find this one's really good. It's an American one. It's called a circle hoe. And the cutting edge is there. And you work it like that, pulling it towards you. And because of this outer ring, it, nothing else but the weeds inside are going to get cut. Now, Carol is off to Felixstowe, where she's seeing Diana Harold, plus a few members of her family. Diana is a retired teacher, but she's always busy, whether it's working in her garden or looking after her granddaughters, who love spending time with her. Look, Tess, that's a plant, those long ones, but that's a weed. On her last visit, Carol helped Diana make a path through her woodland area with bark chippings and timber stepping stones. It's helped to create a magical playground for the girls. They love it. They love that path. Push chairs have gone round, the wheelbarrow's gone round, the children have gone round. I don't feel too precious about my garden. They can do what they like because, of course, I love them desperately. So um, if something gets broken off, it'll come again next year. I'm not too worried about it. Since Carol was last here, Diana has started work on the paths around her vegetable patch. She's enlisted the help of her son, Conrad, and her daughter, Becky, who spent most of their Easter break shifting hardcore, but then they used to being called in to help with the heavier work in their mum's garden. If you come round to visit, she's normally in the garden as opposed to in the house. She calls it pottering. Pottering. Apart from the bits we do, quite stressful, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, hard work, that is. With the new paths done, Diana and Carol can now get on with planting into the vegetable beds. But first, they're digging in lots of well-rotted manure. Lovely muck. Look at that. Super. I mean, this is the whole idea of these deep beds that you just take Dig out. In. Yeah, take out a spit of soil, break up that subsoil. Yes. And then incorporate any bulky organic matter. And it's going to give your vegetables this fantastic deep root run. We're putting back the topsoil that we removed earlier, being careful not to dig it in so that the rich manure remains at a deeper level and will draw the roots down once Diana has planted her vegetables. Now you won't be able to plant in this for at least a week, maybe mm -hmm. a little longer. These deep beds mean no compaction, never ever walk on it, just let it get on with it. Right. So all those little air pockets will just have to gradually settle. disappear and mm -hmm. settle. Diana's got one bed which she prepared a couple of weeks ago, which is now ready for planting, surrounded by its new path. What a difference it makes. They must have taken you forever. They did. A very aristocratic looking paths, aren't they? <laughs> oh, they are. Suitable for you. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to plant where? Well, that beautiful bit there is for the more delicate right. things. The fine tilth. The fine yeah. tilth. And I want to put some potatoes in. Right. And because it's a deep bed, I can put quite a lot in. You can put them very close together. That's a great advantage right. of deep beds. They can be really intensively cultivated. Let's go and have a look what you've got. Yes. <laughs> You're not going to be ever so thrilled, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> not all of Diana's seedlings have been successful, but her beetroot and carrots look very hopeful. Right, carrots or beetroot, madam? I think beetroot. Yeah. <laughs> those there? Oh, no. Yes. If you can get them out of those modules, theoretically, it's, 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 easy. it's a cinch. Diana's sown her beetroot in multiples of five or six into the modules. We're planting them in a clump, not bothering to thin them out. They'll simply jostle for space. Well, you've grown these beautifully. 
Well, it's a good you job I've really grown have. something beautifully, isn't it? So what we're going to do next, the carrots. Yes. Long carrots tend to fork if they come into contact with manure. But these patio carrots are small and round and the roots will stay close to the surface. It's really important with carrots that you minimise any sort of bruising of the stems or leaves because it's the smell that attracts the carrot fly. I've heard that you can put boards up at the sides because they fly low and don't get the scent. You can do all sorts of things. Physical barriers are the best. Mesh or um, a fleece, fleece. Yes. special sort of agri-fleece that you plonk on the top. Next into the bed are seed potatoes. Diana's encouraged them to sprout by chitting them, leaving them in a cool, light place for about six weeks. We've dug a trench about eight inches deep and we're adding a bit of extra muck to increase the yield. No, pass us a spud, loose. Thank you. How many do you think we'll get in this trench? About four. Sprouty end up. As long as you sprout up, you're OK. These are first earlies, aren't they? Yes, these are Pentland Javelin. Right, well, we're not very early, but I think, we're, <laughs> I think we're in time. And they'll give you a crop of really good new potatoes. Which is all I'm after, not too many. Yeah, just a few delicious ones. Delicious. delicious. Straight out of the ground, into the pot. So this should be a little raised, because we've put all that extra muck underneath. And then, as the potatoes develop and you start to see the shoots, protect them by earthing them up a bit more and they won't go green. The organic way to control pests is to use companion planting. The theory is that these chives will not only look pretty around the vegetable bed, but the smell will deter the dreaded carrot fly from attacking Diana's crop. Yes. Here come the girls with the flowers, wonderful. Now I've got these tagetes. They're not my favourite flower. No, they're not terribly you, are they? No, but they have this Thank you wonderful smell, don't they, that puts bugs off. The marigold's large open flowers will also attract hoverflies, whose larvae are predators of the gardener's number one enemy, the aphid. Oh. Come on, girls. Never mind passing them. Come on, let's plant a few. That's it. Put your trowel down and use your hands. Put them in all along the edge. That's it. And then those pretty flowers are actually going to stop all these nasty bugs chomping on your nun's potatoes. Well, what a fantastic job you've done. That's absolutely brilliant. That's all we've got time for this week, and we shan't be back next week because you're getting a double dose of Brookside. But in a fortnight's time, we'll be back as normal when Anne-Marie is going to go shopping for plants with Lisa at the RHS show at Westminster. And Carol is getting all fruity with Adrian and Debbie down in Devon. And I'll be back here with Brani, who's throwing things at me, where we're making a wildflower meadow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. I đã từng nói yêu mình ngày Một đời một kiếp Bởi tình điều đó anh nhận lại Một đời đau thương Tình yêu vụn vỡ Gãy gánh giữa chừng Chất than số phận Hay do mình làm tên Vệ non hẹn biển bên nhau một đời Giờ thì ta mất nhau rồi Chút bình rượu say nghĩ rằng mình sẽ quên đi Sự khuya hẹn gió trăng về Nỗi đau lại thêm nắng nề trong anh Giờ cuộc đời anh nơi này Gọi gọn hai chữ đau thương Tưởng rằng thời gian nguôi ngoài ngờ đâu thêm sợ có chú đâu có bác nó bác nó cầm súng đấy là bắn cái tặng bắn cái tặng nó có thể nguy nó có thể nguy nguy bắn cái tặng
and they'll give you a crop of really good new potatoes. Which is all I'm after, not too many. Yeah, just a few delicious ones. Delicious. Straight out of the ground, into the pot. So this should be a little raised, because we've put all that extra muck underneath. And then, as the potatoes develop, and you start to see the shoots, protect them by earthing them up a bit more, and they won't go green. The organic way to control pests is to use companion planting. The theory is that these chives will not only look pretty around the vegetable bed, but the smell will deter the dreaded carrot fly from attacking Diana's crop. Yes. Here come the girls with the flowers, wonderful. Now I've got these tagetes. They're not my favourite flower. No, they're not terribly you, are they? No, <laughs> but they have this Thank you wonderful smell, don't they, that puts bugs off. The marigold's large open flowers will also attract hoverflies, whose larvae are predators of the gardener's number one enemy, the aphid. Come on, girls. Never mind passing them. Come on, let's plant a few. That's it. Put your trowel down and use your hands. Put them in all along the edge. That's it. And then those pretty flowers are actually going to stop all these nasty bugs chomping on your nun's potatoes. Well, what a fantastic job you've done. That's absolutely brilliant. That's all we've got time for this week, and we shan't be back next week because you're getting a double dose of Brookside. But in a fortnight's time, we'll be back as normal when Anne-Marie is going to go shopping for plants with Lisa at the RHS show at Westminster, and Carol is getting all fruity with Adrian and Debbie down in Devon, and I'll be back here with Brani, who's throwing things at me, where we're making a wildflower meadow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.